All right, y'all. So I got a clip that I want to play for y'all. I, I, I kind of want to know y'all thoughts on this one. This has been on my YouTube feed for the longest and y'all, I just want to say it got me right. Uh, so this is a clip from Lecrae's interview or sit down. To be honest, I don't really know what to call it. I mean, I think you're going to see a, a guy kind of asking Lecrae some questions and then him giving his honest thoughts. So I guess you can call that an interview. But you know, I don't know. I guess I'll just call it a video from now. How about that? Anyways, in this video, one of the questions he's trying to answer is this. Is it OK to love Jesus and not go to church? Now, I thought, well, that's an interesting question. And after I watched the uh, video for the first time, I thought Lecrae gave a very interesting answer that I kind of want to delve into in this video. So I want to play that for us and then I'm going to give my thoughts on it. Um, but with all that being said, Let's dive right in. Is it okay to love Jesus and not go to church? All right. So church as an institution in America is not the, the thing that God was talking about in the scriptures, right? The, or the institution that we see in a lot of the world, right? Church is a community, is a body of people. It is not an institution um, that has oratory and a stage and music and, uh, you know, just the whole like theatrical style of it is not like, that's a, that's not an ancient prescription. That's more of a current phenomenon than it is this ancient prescription of this like theatrical oratory style where someone has to be an amazing orator and you, you know, you got this like Broadway esque type of thing happening on Sunday. I think that's more of, of a consumer like Western capitalistic economic driven thing and all right so i want to pause the video here because i thought it was very interesting uh it was a very interesting way to start giving your answer to this question so lecrae starts by giving a rather bold claim that the church as an institution in america is not the thing that god was talking about in the scriptures now I wasn't shocked by this claim by any means when I heard this for the first time um, when I watched the video, because if you know Lecrae, then you know he has been on this type of energy for a while now, right? Uh, but I was still kind of disappointed in his answer because I just thought, man, that is just too broad of a description to give that bold of a claim. I mean, he really does not leave any room for nuance in that statement. Now, he does go on to add, you know, and include other parts of the world in his critique. Uh, but to be honest, I just think that makes it worse, right? He then goes on to say that the church is a body of people and is not an institution uh, that has uh, an oratory, a stage, music, etc. And he likens uh, all of this to a type of Broadway-esque or theatrical phenomenon of doing church that is foreign to what the apostles in the early church were privy to. Now, again, I feel like there are some aspects to this critique uh, of the modern day church that are completely valid. And I guess I would say the validity of this critique depends on how you interpret what he means by Broadway-esque or theatrical, because you do have some churches who treat Sunday service like it's a concert or a play or a TED talk, right? And some of them do very goofy stuff like this. That day is going to come when the sky is cracked and Jesus Christ comes again. Talk about an entrance. That's Brown Baptist Church pastor Bartholomew Orr making one during Sunday service. Are you ready? Yes. Are you ready for his return? But that's not every church that is doing goofy stuff like that, right? Um, it, it's it's a select few that are that are doing these things. Now, if what he means by Broadway-esque or theatrical is that we have a preacher and a worship and all of this is done, you know, on stage, then I would say that this critique lacks a whole lot of new uh, nuance. And actually, I would even venture to argue that this point is actually unintelligible or ignorant to the nuance needed to engage in ecclesiology, which if you don't know what ecclesiology means, it is simply a theological term that refers to the study of matters about the church, right? Uh, now, he hasn't finished giving his point yet, so I'm going to play the rest of his clips so that he can give the rest of his reasoning behind this statement. Uh, but I, I believe he just dug himself a massive hole here. And I just want to flag some concerns with this statement as it reeks of a type of 
overgeneralization, oversimplification, and just a lack of understanding of church history and a doctrine and structure of the church and how it has developed over time. But with all that being said, let's get uh, back to the clip real quick. And that's not what God's intention is. God's intention is a body, a group of people who need each other, who rely on each other, who confide in each other, who have different gifts, different abilities, and they use them collectively together to one, demonstrate that God is amazing to the outside world, to usher in the kingdom as Jesus was doing, to support one another um, because there's different needs. And then there's order within this fellowship, right? Paul lists out like the order that he'd like to see re regarding it. And so that's why there's like elders and so on and so forth. So that's what church is supposed to be. All right, again, I just want to pause here because I want to engage with the point that he just made there. Now, I appreciate um, Lecrae giving his idea of what a church is supposed to be like. Typically, in conversations like this, you have people who are good at critiquing everybody else, but they never have any solutions or positive examples of what things are supposed to be like. So kudos to him for doing that. However, again, I would like to express my concerns with this answer because I believe it's just too simplistic for a conversation like this. For example, he says that a church is a group of people who need, rely on, and confide in each other and who have different gifts and abilities that are used collectively to demonstrate that God is amazing and uh, to support one another. And all of this is done under the leadership that Paul lays out in the scriptures. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm confused here. Like, how is his description of the church any different from what we see in America or in other parts of the world? Many people would agree with Lecrae's definition of the church here. Now, of course, there they may want to add some nuance because I do believe there is a lot that Lecrae is missing here in his description, but I believe there is much common ground here and not a lot of churches would find a problem with starting with a definition like this. Like, I don't understand what exactly is Lecrae critiquing in this clip. Like, what is the problem with the modern uh, day style of doing church? Is it the fact that there is a pastor who speaks in front of a pulpit? Is it because, you know, we conduct worship on a stage? Is it the music? Uh, should we be singing first century style music? Like, what is he getting at? Do you see what I mean? Like, Lecrae is saying a whole lot in this clip, but he's not really saying much at all, right? When you think about it. That's something you just can't do, uh, you know, in a critique like this, when you're lumping every church in America and in, in other parts of the world as well. Like, what are we doing here? But let me play this uh, last part of his answer to see if he gives us a little bit more to work with that can help us better understand where he's coming from. So let me play it this other part. We don't really see a lot of that um, in our society. We see people showing up on Sunday to come to a play or a Broadway presentation. They're disconnected from one another. There's not really genuine fellowship. You don't know if you'll see the same people from week to week. There's no real connectivity or genuine relationships. So a lot of churches, institutions have had to create these things called community groups, hoping to facilitate some community. But that even becomes awkward because now you're forcing people to connect and like jive together instead of like an authentic way of living amongst each other. And so I, I I get it. I get why people struggle with that. And if that's not a problem for you and you can find some resolve and, and that works for you, then praise God. You know, but all of us can't get around needing to have fellowship with other believers, uh, to have a group of people that we're so interconnected with that, man, they can challenge us, encourage us, call us up to a higher standard or tell us like, hey, we see this and rally together to, to, to live out righteousness in society and serving people. Like we all, that's what the church is supposed to be. Um, and so I get it, you know I mean? But when we're in a sense, we're like exiles, you know, when the church was exiled, when, when they were scattered amongst the world, they just had to meet at somebody's house and like get together and get through in the text and make it happen. If you go to China, you're not going to see, you know, St. Emmanuel's Baptist church. You're going to see people in an apartment getting together on the low underground and it's still effective. And I know, cause I've been there and I've done it. Right. Um, but man, honor the Lord, you know, honor God. It's not about like, oh man, I, did, I didn't, I haven't been to the institution with a good speaker in a long time. No, but are you connected to people who love Jesus? Are you? 
right? Like, that's the real question. <laughs> All right. So before I give my thoughts on what he just said, I do want to preface my statements by saying that this video is not designed to attack Lecrae in any way, shape or form, right? I always like to give that qualification. Um, I merely want to engage with his comments because I think they are indicative of a larger sentiment that some people are starting to have about the church. And to be honest with you, I think it's a little concerning, not because I believe what Lecrae just said is undermining the gospel or something egregious like that, because I believe, uh, but rather because I believe he is promoting an idea that just lacks nuance and can lead people down a dangerous path, if not careful. Now, even though I have some concerns about what Lecrae just said here, that doesn't mean that I cannot empathize with his sentiments regarding how some churches are being conducted. It seems like Lecrae's main concern or critique of the modern day church is that it lacks a sense of community or connection with the individual and is being infiltrated with a bunch of TED Talk speakers and, and instead of pastors. Now, he didn't say it like that, but that's essentially what I believe he's getting at. And I just want to say that I feel that, right? I I believe that this is the one valid critique that he has made in his whole entire uh in this whole entire segment. I have these same concerns about these same evangelical pastors who focus more on giving the best visual demonstration instead of simply proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. And as for the lack of community or connection within the church, this is actually a struggle for a lot of churches, especially those with larger congregations, because it's hard to facilitate genuine relationships with thousands of strangers who are unified simply by by the, their love for Jesus, right? It's hard. I'm, I'm not going to deny that. I don't think any church will deny that. I mean, if you interview any pastor and ask him if this is one of his top five concerns, he would probably say absolutely. But I guess my problem with Lecrae's critiques is this, that it just lacks a lot of nuance and specificity, right? Like, is your critique merely that this is a problem within churches today, or is it that you are concerned that the churches are not, you know, taking this problem seriously? We don't know what, you know, Lecrae thinks because he doesn't specify exactly what he means. Lecrae also comes at the idea of community groups, which I think it's a little bit problematic and in, in how they're being used by the churches to try to facilitate this sense of community. And he de describes it as churches forcing people to connect and jive together. And I must say, I am really concerned with this type of caricaturing and mischaracterization of the purpose of community groups. I mean, I can't stress this enough, right? If Lecrae doesn't like community groups, then that's okay. That's fine, right? Community groups are not for everyone. I get it. Uh, but don't project your disdain or dislike for community groups onto everyone else and frame it as a way uh, that churches are uh, using this method to force people to connect because that is not at all the heart behind why these churches are employing uh, these community groups. If that was the case for a church that Lecrae went to, then he should just say that, all right? If he has some uh, some critiques about how that church went about, you know, employing uh, community groups or conducting community groups, then he should just say that. He should have brought those concerns to the group or to the church, but don't make a video about it only to shed a negative light on it and and also don't lump every church in America and around the world in this critique either as I believe is just intellectually dishonest you never know who may be watching this video there could be a person who is new to the faith and who need that community group and that community group may have some imperfections but what you don't want to do is inspire people to continue to uh, what you don't want to do is uh try to take the simplistic view of community groups what you would rather want to do is inspire people to continue to be the in the change and not just throw the baby out with the bathwater, right uh th and that's actually how i would summarize his critique in this segment it is the old throw the baby out with the bathwater argument instead of giving his concerns about the modern day church and how we can fix it um you know, different aspects of it. He says that the whole thing is just not biblical. Instead of advising on how to improve community groups, he makes it seem like the whole thing is a wash, right? I mean, 
that's really the spirit behind this critique when you boil it down, right? The crazy part about all of this is that he still technically did not answer the question, which is, is it okay to love Jesus and not go to church? I mean, in some sense, he gave us his, you know, disposition on how he felt about today's churches. And I guess we can, you know, deduce from that, that he believes that you can love Jesus and not go to church because today's churches are not biblical or in his words, an ancient prescription. But I don't want to put words in his mouth, right? I would much rather him give a straight up answer instead of beating around the bush, right? Especially in, in this type of way. I just don't understand why Lecrae doesn't understand that you can call out the fact that some of these evangelical churches are looking more like a Broadway show than a gathering of brothers and sisters in Christ who are looking uh, to commune with each other and worship God in spirit and truth without throwing away the whole thing, right? You can call out the fact that pastors are trying to be celebrities nowadays without casting uh, uh, or casting out the whole idea of a pastor preaching on a pulpit out the window. You can do both. It doesn't have to be an either or situation. It could be a both and. I, I really hate to say this, right? But this is the problem with most Protestants. We are so busy reforming and reforming, forever trying to get back to what it looked like in the book of Acts, that we forget that not everything in the book of Acts was prescriptive, or again, in his words, an ancient prescription. Some things were descriptive as well. For those who don't know what the difference is between uh, descriptive and prescriptive, let me break it down for you. Prescriptive things are things that are to be held for all time. Take, for example, the Ten Commandments, right? God did not just give the Ten Commandments to Israel for that particular time, but he was revealing his perfect law to them for them to teach future generations and other nations as well, and for them to be governed by it for all time. Now, descriptive things, on the other hand, are not things that are to be held for all time. Take the appointment of Matthias, for an example. When the apostles cast lots to determine who was going to take the place of Judas, uh, they were not teaching us that this is the process for determining who would succeed them when one of them died, right? They were using a commerce practice at that particular time to help determine who the next apostle was going to be. Now, just because something is descriptive that does not mean we can't take anything from it again going back to the example of uh, the appointment of Matthias the apostles said a prayer before casting lots and that and that signified that their trust was not in the practice of casting lots but rather in the in the Lord you can read this story actually in Acts chapter uh, 1 verses 12, I believe to 26, in case you haven't heard of that uh, passage before. I definitely recommend it. It's great to, to read about church history, to read about how the church was established um, in, in the first century. But getting back to the top of that hand, when we read of the early church having fellowship in their homes and things like that, we should be careful not to read this as being something prescriptive but rather descriptive we can't truly do a one-to-one -one comparison between the early church and today because everything is not the same as it was back then first and foremost right uh there are way more people now than it was back then right it, i think it's uh 1.5 billion people in the Roman Catholic Church. There are 250 million people in the Eastern Orthodox Church, and I believe uh, 800 million people in the Protestant Church uh, traditions, right? Th those are a lot of people. In the early church, it was probably barely a million people, right? So not necessarily apples to apples here. Secondly, there's a uh, secondly, there is a lot less persecution now than it was back then. Right. I think this is an important uh, point to point out because Lecrae, it seems like Lecrae sort of understands this. Hence why he used the example of China in this example. You know, China and the people at China, they have to meet in homes and kind of follow the model of the early church because they in the early church were living in a time of persecution in America. We don't have that problem. Right. By the grace of God, we're not living in persecution. So we can buy things like buildings and cathedrals and we can meet publicly and express our faith um, in, in 
any type of manner that we want, right? Because we live in a, a in a land that uh, allows us to have freedom of religion, right? Um, but in China, that's not the case. So yes, they have to go on the ground. Yes, they have to meet in people's homes and they have to be a lot more discreet with their proclamation of the gospel because that is the type of situation that they're living in, right? So you see how Lecrae's points are, are starting to lack a lot of nuance in this clip. Now, if he wants to choose to be a part of a smaller community that meets up, read and proclaim the gospel, worship and commune with each other, um, then that's great. That's fine, but don't implicitly or explicitly poo poo on those who choose to go to larger congregations to experience the same, you know, church community. If a large church uh, community wants to implement community groups in order to make that larger body into a smaller body that meets with each other on an individual le level, let them do that, right? They're not doing anything wrong. If you have a better idea, then please be my guest. Bring them forward instead of throwing stones from within a glass house. And uh, the reason why I would say that Lecrae in is in a glass house is that he doesn't sound like he has a mature understanding of ecclesiological matters. It sounds like he just read a bunch of stuff that sounded good and just so happened to fit his current uh, disposition on how he felt about the church and decided to run with it. Right. And this is not hard to believe as Lecrae never forgets to mention the hurt he experienced while being in the church. And, and I'm not trying to downplay his experience experience at all. What I am saying to you is that you have to recognize that you are hurt and are still hurting and you're not in the best position to give ecclesiological guidance to possibly uh, others who are hurt and hurting like yourself. And or this person just may be new to the Christian faith at this particular time. I mean, these are probably the types of individuals who are going to be asking this type of question. Is it OK to love Jesus and not go to church? Right. Because any mature Christian would would not be having this type of question. You have to be new or struggling in your faith, because why else would you want to know if you can love Jesus and not be connected with his body? Because that's what Jesus calls the church, the body of Christ. If you're still struggling with this question yourself or have removed yourself uh, from these American or Western churches, then your advice is like a divorced person advising a newly married person or a person contemplating divorce on their marriage, right? Like you're, you're probably not the best person to get advice from. And, and that's not to say that you don't have good advice on other topics, but it's just saying that it's probably wise not to get advice from you on this particular topic. And that, that's all I'm trying to say. Again, I'm not trying to come for Lecrae here. I'm just giving the facts that matter. You can listen to the whole video yourself and then you can tell me that I'm wrong. Again, the video will always be in the description box below for those who wants to uh, listen to his whole talk in context. But again, I actually played the whole segment where he answered that question. So I'm not pulling anything out of context. You know, for those who are a fan of Lecrae like I am and, and have been following his journey for some time now, you you should know what I'm talking about. Right. He hasn't been the biggest advocate for the church for a while now. Uh, now, I believe he has a right to speak his opinion. And I'm not saying that he should just shut up and say nothing, because, again, I think he draws attention to some valid concerns in this video. But I think he is wrong in his conclusion and some of the. Uh, uh, you know, and some of the deductions that he's making. And it's important to point that out because this is why our brothers and sisters in the Catholic Church and the Eastern Orthodox Church make claims like, oh, the Protestant Church does not think Christ has established a visible church or that, you know, Protestants believe that everyone is their own pope or something along those lines. This is where they're getting that notion from. And unfortunately, Lecrae does not realize he's doing way more harm than good by not taking, by not talking about the subject with more nuance, right? Again, I'm not saying that he can't speak on the subject. I'm just saying that you have to be careful, Lecrae, when you do, right? You have to understand that you're not like everyone else, 
You're not like the rest of us. You have a large audience and some of them may be new to the faith. Some of them may be hurting from different types of church hurt. Some of them may need encouragement to try again with a new church body, right? You never know who you're touching, who you're speaking to right here, right? So the advice that I would give for everyone, including Lecrae in this, is that, look, call attention to the problems with it within the church seek to reform that which has strayed away from the christian faith or which has you know diminished any aspect of the gospel let's continue to hold our leaders accountable let's let's you know do away with these uh superficial ted talk uh speakers who want to call themselves pastors and start calling men of god uh who meet the qualifications set in second timothy and titus and in james uh to to be the leaders the preachers the teachers in our community right but in your doing make sure you do not become overzealous in your reforming that you lose sight of all history and the importance of the nuance in engaging in ecclesiological matters not everything about the church is going to be black and white there are some things about the church that are gray and in that gray we have the freedom to operate in we have the freedom to to have very ways of expression it's a reason why paul and the other apostles did not say that the church had to look this specific way for all time. They gave us a blueprint of what's going to be needed in a church, like the order of worship in first Corinthians, uh, first Corinthians chapter 14, fellowship of the saints, which we see in uh, Hebrews elders, which we see in second Timothy, Titus, things of that nature and the proclamation of the gospel, which you see in acts, etc. But they left us room for a reason, right? We have to remember this as we're going to be engaging in these types of discussions because we could be a stumbling block to other Christians if we become too dogmatic in our opinion about these things, right? Um, now, I, I wanna speak specifically to my Protestant brothers and sisters for just a moment on this one. We need to stop with this bible onlyism type of mentality. You can believe that the Bible is the infallible word of God and the ultimate source of authority without throwing away all of church history and its traditions. The true Protestant mindset is not that we believe it's the Bible and then nothing else, right? But rather we believe that everything that we must do must align with the Bible. It's okay to have a tradition of how you would like to order your church service, right? The only thing that you have to do is ask yourself, does it line up with scripture? If the answer to that is yes, beautiful. Enjoy your tradition. If the answer to that is no, then do away with it, plain and simple. But whatever we do, we have to get better at having conversations like these because it is not only uh, it not only has an impact on ecumenical dialogue with other church traditions, but it also has an impact on real people's lives. All right. Anyways, guys, I could continue talking about this topic because there's a lot that I, you know, that that's here that I haven't touched on yet, but I want to leave it there. Let me hear from you in the comment section. What do you think about Lecrae's comments? Do you agree with them? Do you disagree with them? Uh, let me know. Also, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe as it helps the channel a lot. We're slowly getting to 300 subscribers. So shout out to everyone who has been helping me get there again. Please like the video and please comment as it does help the channel out a lot. It helps the algorithm promote videos like these. Um, also, you can check out my other videos um, in the reaction series by clicking on the link in the top right corner. Uh, but that's it for this video. Until next time, guys. Peace.